Hello there, I want to talk to you today about open spaces in Newark and Sherwood uh, because we're shortly launching a consultation on what will be our open spaces strategy and I'd like your feedback in helping us to finalise that document. Now that consultation is about to go live and it will continue right the way through to the 21st September so plenty of time to look into that. All right, so let's begin. What do I mean by open space? Uh, so a table's coming up on screen uh, and this gives you some various different categories to look at. These are categories that might not mean anything immediately, but they do mean that we can look at things in different ways and categorise them differently. So you know, let's be honest. Uh, we don't say we're going to take our child down to a semi-natural area to kick a ball. We take them down the park. Uh, and we need to look at things in different ways that categorise how people use them. Indeed, one of those users might be nature itself, and we might just set uh, some land aside for that purpose. So you th see those on screen. Allotments hopefully explain themselves. Play areas, different types of play provision for different ages of children. Uh, but then you have those different categories, as I mentioned, amenity space, parks and gardens hopefully explain themselves, and then that natural, semi-natural greenscape. What you won't see included there uh, as a category are playing pitches. So there's a reason for that, and that is we have to have a separate document on that to satisfy the requirements of Sports England. So in addition to what I'm going to talk about later, the amount of open space we have, and green space as well, it doesn't show, but we can add on to that all the different playing pitches, rugby, football, cricket, etc., that exist uh, and demonstrate we have this huge provision for sports and for recreation. And I think importantly at that moment, I would just emphasise that being Sport England, who of course are the national experts on this and the amount that should be required per head. And we work to those national benchmarks. And hopefully I'll have a little bit of good news to share with you furthermore on that. So. What is this consultation about? So first of all, we've done this audit. Uh, we've gone out and we've worked with parishes and others to try and identify the open space that exists uh, and to categorise that uh, and to try and help people identify what exists. So I've got a district-wide uh, measure, which I'll share with you shortly, but also we drill right the way down into different areas, of villages, towns. So importantly, when you do see this document, I can't apologise, it's a very long document, but if you're just interested in the area in which you live, you can drill down into that area, have a specific look, and just make comments for that particular area if you wish. It is a big document, and that's because it's a really important document. And what I do want to emphasise is I see the comments and I get the correspondence. Open space and green space, depending how we define it, are important to you, they're important to me, we've prescribed cleaner, safer, greener, and it's very important to this council. So not every council has one of these documents. It's a planning document. We have resolved we will have one. It is data driven, it's an independent audit, and it's inviting your comments to shape what we do in the future. So if I may, let me just try and uh, describe and shape how we've got to, to create this document. So in the first instance, I've mentioned the audit. So it was an independent audit. We haven't done it ourselves. We've got consultants in who know this stuff on this area uh, to come in and look at those different levels of open space. And as I say, we've categorized them in such a way that we can benchmark them. So the agency we're looking to on this is called Fields in Trust, and they are a national charity dedicated to the protection of open space. Uh, and that's why we chose them, that we want to meet their standards, and so we need the categories that they use to benchmark people in different ways. Not everybody in the nation uses them, but as far as standards go, it's the most obvious one, and it's probably the best one. And some of the good news that I will be sharing is, district-wide, not only do we meet their standard, we're setting a standard that by far exceeds theirs. Because as I've said, this is very important to us and to you and something we will work hard on in future. So again, another table popping up on screen now. Uh, and there it is. So that gives you some of those figures. Now they are district wide. I'm not looking to mislead anybody in that. I can't do every area in a short video. Uh, but as I say, you can drill down to different areas. And again, let's be totally upfront straight away. Quite obviously, there are hugely rural parts of the district where there will be a lot of green space and open space. But then we have more urban areas, Newark, uh, Ollerton, Southwell, Blidworth, uh, perhaps parts of Loudoun, where there may be some deficits. And there are a few uh, across the district where we need to have a little more. So what this document is doing, those figures there is showing you, by different category, not just a lump sum, we're able to now analyse and assess have we got enough parks and gardens, enough green space, enough play areas for different children? And what will be developed alongside this going forward are standards for those as well. 
So it's not just that we've got the right hectareage, but that we've got the right kit, the right equipment for people in those different areas. And as you'll see, looking at the fields in trust column down the centre, we don't seem to be doing too badly on some of those. There's a little bit more explanation on the right, but fields in trust, their uh, sort of benchmark standard is 1.8 hectares per 1,000 people. Now, because we've now got the data and we better understand things, we're looking to have a standard target, so in some areas it's a target, some will already reach it, of 10 hectares per 1,000 people. So that's over five times higher than the standard a national charity dedicated protecting open space is seeking, uh, and it's important that we do that. So what this audit has done is to bring forward the data we need, as you can see in that table, so that we can identify and start to do things going forward. Thereafter then, we've assessed it. It's not just, as I say, uh, the provision of, it is the quality also. Now the third element, which is over to you uh, in this sense, it is the purpose of the strategy. So we've got the information, we've tried to identify it, we're welcoming your comments, have we got it right, have we missed something, uh, what do you feel about the standard of something, what's missing, do please go in, we're inviting free comments, not prescribing how you respond to us, and this is all online, as I say, and the website has been across the bottom of the screen, so you can find this document. What comes out of this, the strategy, is in effect a planning document, a planning policy, uh, and that means that when any developer comes forward, they know, in the first instance as a council, we've chosen to have an open space strategy, it should send a message in itself, they know by area and locality what level of provision there is, what level we're looking for, what might be protected, what might need enhancing, and in any scheme they might come forward with, because housing developments always occur, nationally there is a drive to build more houses and we're no different, we're part of that as well. At least we're front footing with developers and owners of land. These are the expectations, not just of the council, but I hope also of residents. So it should shape planning applications before they even get to us. But then more importantly, when they do land, we've got a data-driven, proven, expertly developed and benchmarked document to use perhaps if we push back a bit with developers, or if we say no, or in appeals if people work against us in that respect. We might not be successful 100% of the time, and I cannot promise that everything within that will be protected, but a good chunk will, and as I say, it means we can look to move forward. So we can plan, we can prioritise, we can protect, we can improve, we can do everything we need to do on this area that you are telling me is incredibly important to yourselves. So I hope that has explained to you the purpose of the strategy, how it's been developed, what's available, how you can get involved yourselves. Please, please do. Let's prove this is a priority and help us with those constructive comments. As I've said, there are different data sets all across the country on different things. Let me be clear, Newark and Sherwood District Council, whether it's Sport England or Fields in Trust, we have gone for the highest benchmark possible from recognised expert organisations. That reflects the priority and importance we're putting on this and that we're having this document. We welcome your feedback. Once we've had that, it will be assessed and we'll be finalising the strategy and launching it probably sometime, hopefully, early next year. We can all come together on this. This will support us on climate change, the work we're doing for nature, but very importantly, ensuring in every part of this district we have access to space, open and green, that we require for ourselves, for health determinants, and for enjoying just the area that we live in. So please have a look, and can I thank you in advance for your time.